Oh. Y'all just in time. And no, it's not cocktail time. It's not. This is what we call a marinade for ribs. Yes, it is. Juicy ribs fall off the bone, smoked with peach and mesquite, and a spritzing of what? Crown whiskey and Sprite. And it fizzled. <laughs> Hey, thank y'all for stopping by the barn on a glorious day. A little chilly it is. It is about 29 degrees out here in the shade. Yes, it is. But I'd like to thank the folks at Ariat for sponsoring this video because mm, 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 I'll be looking really good and this jacket is really warm. That's why I got it on. There's a little breeze coming through here. But the good folks at Ariat also have created a special spot on their website for the Kent Rollins favorites. Whether it be summertime, wintertime, or anytime, they got you fixed up, they do. But folks, Let's go ahead and talk about what's really happening today, and that is some baby back ribs. Let's give it up for the baby back. Come on back. You be coming to the table for some baby back. Whoa, yes. I'm sorry, Shan, but I really get excited when these baby back ribs. Look at all my peoples here. They are waiting so patiently for some ribs. Cletus says, oh my gosh, rib day is here it is. Now, folks, Let's first talk about going and getting some baby back ribs at the store, okay? So when you go down there and you look in there, and most of them, all of them are cryovac, look for them ribs that ain't shiners. Now, a lot of you be knowing shiners. Shiner in this case is if you can see some bone sticking through that meat. You don't want to see that white bone running up there through the top because what? Ain't got no meat on it. And I want you to show you the thickness of that rib. See all this meat that's on there? There is a white membrane that is on these ribs. Folks, this has to come off. I really like to do it with a spoon, whether it be this end or this end. And you can get right across the concave texture of that bone and peel that little outer layer of that peeling right up there, that little skin, and then grab it with a paper towel because a paper towel will hold on it a whole lot better than something slick. They peel a whole lot better when they're uh, really half thawed out to me. We're talking about patting these ribs dry because there is a little bit of moisture on there and I just want to make sure it's all off there. Whether you're seasoning or you're marinating, I want it to be a dry surface to begin with. But something that I really love to put on some ribs and it gives it such a unique flavor. So let me break it out for you. What are we talking about? Are you making a cocktail? No, no, no. A meat cocktail. We are. Crown peach. I'm telling you, folks, that stuff has really got a nice flavor to it. And the reason I like Sprite is, what is it? Lemon lime. I just want it to just get a good little dose of it everywhere and just rub it in really well. Do both sides. Turn him right over. And then we have a shelf here. It's like this, remember? So just pour down in there. And we have just the right amount left for this one. What we're gonna do now is we are gonna cover it with some of that good plastic wrap. And folks, I'm gonna tell you right now, most of the time y'all have seen me fight that stuff forever and ever in a 60 mile an hour breeze. So we'll see how well it works today without a breeze. You never know about this stuff. It has caused me many headaches in the past it has, like this one right here. Where is the end of it at that you start with? So, Tell you what we're going to do. <laughs> Everybody's thinking, yep, the saran wrap has won again. If I can get my fingers hold of it, look at that. There we go. And just roll it out here where it's about as long as the pan. And oh my gosh, this one has got one of them fancy little what you call it's on there. And just run it down through there. Now I would like for you to let these come to room temperature before we do anything else and that's going to be probably close to 45 minutes but it's not going to be out here look at all these subjects that are laying around now you used to have to keep it beagle proof height which you could get by with but now when you have cletus height which is seven foot right cletus he can reach the top shelf there if he wants to well them ribs is been soaking about 30 minutes right now they have so we need to go ahead and get this fire built we do and folks, like I say, we're putting them on the Roughneck Smoker. We partnered up with Hasty Bake Grill Company to design a smoker that really gives you a faster smoking time and doesn't require 
as much wood as you would think because folks this thing when you latch it down securely tight with this latch and the bottom latch down there it is what we call airtight so we're going to start with a little fogo hardwood lump but oh kent he's using what the propane torch if y'all have seen me to do it so many times we're going to go ahead and put two pieces of mesquite in here to start out with now, as we're letting them coals sit really good, hot and white, I think I should tell you about really what I like to pair with pork. And most of the time I like to start off with a, uh, an oak and then add to that with what? Usually cherry or apple or peach, but sometimes I'll throw in a little piece of mesquite. Now, a lot of you love to use hickory. Hickory's not readily available here, but I have used it sometimes. But I really think if you're just solid mesquite, it's a little overpowering it can become. So I like to just use me a mixture of oak, a little bit of mesquite, and some fruit wood of your choice. Let's go ahead and get them ribs uncovered. And now it is time for us to add some seasoning so it can sit there and bond to that meat. And I'm just using our rib rub because folks, it's got a little brown sugar in it, got just a little heat in it, but it really brings out really the most flavor to me of any rib rub that I've used on a piece of meat. And then before we turn them over, folks, I like to do this right here and put a wire rack up here. And we're gonna use a really heavy coating of this, we are. And we're gonna let this set till that fire gets good and hot. Let me get this area jacket off and get down to business because we got to pull them grates out of that smoker. But I think while we're doing all this, it'd be a good time for me to tell you that book tour is up on us now. I'm telling you, be careful and watch out because I am coming to a city near you. So be sure and look at the events page on our website. It will have you fixed up on when we're going and where we're going. But let's get them grates out. I'm going to leave one on there because folks, we're gonna finish them ribs a little bit over here right at the very end, so we're gonna leave that one. But so many smokers, when you go to hanging ribs in them, you off the fire about this much time you start. Well, I'm gonna tell you what, folks, if I can get it in there right, which is right there. This gives you some room to let them ribs hang, which increases you about that much, but still, everything fits just right. Well, we are 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we got to get the hooks. And folks, I like to go down here. Let's just see it so you can see it this way. One, two, three, fourth rib. And just go right in there between. You, you like the fourth rib too big? That's my favorite. Well, it is time to hang them up and let them get to going. So we're just going to slip this one in there. Tell you what, I'm going to lay him right there for just a minute. I'm going to slip this one right under here. We're gonna take this other one, slip him in right over here. I don't want them touching. We are going to shut the lid, latch it down, but we gotta add a little cherry wood to it. About two chunks of cherry, pretty good size. You can see about how much we're open here. And we're open about that much on the back also to try to keep this regulated at around 250 degrees. Now I would say probably cooking time is gonna be two to two and a half hours before we wrap them and put them back over there. Things is looking oh so good. So we're gonna bring them off here in just a second and uh, spritz them a little. That's a big word, ain't it, Shan? Sort of fancy. And folks, there's a lot of discrepancy going on whether you should wrap ribs in tinfoil or pink paper. But you know, tinfoil is really going to speed up your cooking time because you've got some reflectivity there and it's going to hold your juices in better off that rib. But the others we're going to wrap in pink paper. Now that's going to sort of slow down their cooking process just a little because there's no reflectivity and some of that broth is actually going to leak through and drip out. So we're going to do one way, one the other, but hey, let's get us some spritzing well, we're mixing. We're going to do yard work now. Yes, yeah, so we're going to do some spritzing. So you still had six ounces of that soda pop left, right? So we're gonna pour it right in here. Wait, what, um, what is that thing? It is a yard sprayer, garden sprayer, spritz or something. It ain't had nothing in it but hot water and Sprite and some crown peach. Just 
Just now, don't use it later for the weeds. That's right. It mixed up. So we're going to add a little bit back in there. Let me get this back on there. I've never used one of these jewels here. So we'll set it right there. I'll meet y'all over here. Oh, Shen's going with me. I'll just go ahead. We're just going to go ahead. So let me get me some gloves on because I got a feeling them could be hot. And I want you to look at that good color that we got there. We'll see what happens here. Like I say, never you. Oh my Ooh. gosh, something is happening. It is. That's fancy. So we'll roll him over here just a little and make sure we get some on the back side. Then, just like a Christmas present it is, wrap it up, seal it up good and tight. Ooh, that does smell good. Both ends. We're going to get this grate back. The second one on there. Shut the lid. Let the happiness commence again. We're going to make sure that that gets up to 250 because it's been holding consistent at 250 ever since we started. At an hour and a half, I want you to check that one in the tin full because he, remember, is going to finish faster than the other one. And I always just like to do the bend test when you can take them ribs and you just bend them a little. And if that cracks up there and that bone tries to jump out, hitting you an eyeball, you was about ready to come off there. He is. The ten full ribs come off first, just like I told you they would at about two hours and I don't know, maybe 20 minutes at the most. And you've seen us when we bended them there, they just cracked a little bit. That's why you know them ribs are tender. So we took them off so they wouldn't overcook and finished cooking them in the pink paper, which took about another 40 minutes and then set them back over there on the hot side of the fire. Open that fire up a little to where we could have some flame and we got our spritz o -matic whiskey machine. Well, you're going to finish up cooking them about 10 minutes there and I like to do it once when we put them on there and then give it about five minutes and do it again. Let's cut this one. This was the tin foil rib and folks, this thing is falling apart, tender as it can be. I'm going to have one more bite. I'm interested to see the difference. Mm. It don't, you don't have to pull it off the bone, but it don't hardly fall off the bone unless you go to cutting on it. So good they are. Let me cut this one. And that's the pink paper? Uh-huh, if I can get around that bone. And you can see, smoke ring-wise, I'd say they were very similar, I would. Did have to pull just a little. Not much. Might have could have stayed on the fire another 15 minutes, but, mm. Like I said, the tin foil there is going to lock in so much more moisture that's going to reabsorb and reabsorb through there and make a steaming effect. And I do think that maybe so these ribs got a little more moisture in them, but I really like the way that these ribs finish. They sort of got a barky crust to them and make you want to do, I got a little bend in it for the rib over here. Just keep going and rocking it and just, wow. Mm, mm. Oh, oh. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, ooh. And go back and just go ahead and let's clean this bone up. Mm, mm but I get that peachy flavor that it sort of brings about. But that cherry wood that was in there mixed with the mesquite and oak, it just sort of just folds over that oh so gently and easy. Well, we thank you so much for tuning in. It means so much to me and Shan, it does. Be sure and give us a like and also leave us a comment down there and share the video with friends and neighbors. But it always is with great honor, pride and privilege that I tip my hat to all our service men and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag of flying back there. We commend you all, we do. I'd like to thank the folks at Ariat for sponsoring this video. Be sure and check out their website to find our favorites down there below. 
Well, the rest of you, come on in here. Get up close. Come on. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to hug you with a rib in hand. I'm going to leave a greasy footprint right on the back of some ribs. God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down the Crown Rule Ribs So Good train. Thank you, Big, for always helping. Thank you, little mage. Lulu, here you go, sugar. Thank you for helping out. I don't know where Cletus and Duker are. Napping. And it fizzled. <laughs> there it goes. So we have a spritzel, we do. Bottom of our hearts, we do for tuning in and watching. It means the world. Something fell out. Might have been a filling. A lot of people out here paying attention this morning. I mean, when we did the cast iron video, there wasn't nobody out here. But when you mention meat, they all show up.